Hey, hey, welcome back to the garage. You're looking at the McLeod RXT 1200, 1200 horsepower clutch. Uh, the clutch in fast enough now uh, is doing good for street driving, but on E85, uh, the stock clutch can't hold and it just pushes past the pressure plate. So it's time to upgrade the clutch. Um, I've got plenty of time, it's not like the car can't drive I just can't really uh, have too much fun this is the part number for the ZL1 with the LSA engine uh, the reason it is specific is because they ship it with an LSA flywheel this is an 8 bolt flywheel it is not the 6 bolt like the LS3 LS1 all right so the pressure plates off and this is a twin disc so you can see it's marked top because this is a top disc and it has a flywheel side. So these are ceramic pucks, uh, which is very good for heat. Um, they can take a lot of abuse and not have any problems. Uh, this is called the floater plate. And then you have another disc on the bottom that's uh, touching the flywheel. You can see I can spin that. If the pressure plate was bolted down, of course, uh, the spring pressure, those springs here, uh, would put so much pressure on there, I wouldn't be able to turn it. But <clears throat> you can see here that McLeod used some Dicom blue or some paint, looks like paint maybe, and they index that because they want that to go back uh, together the same way. Now. In their instructions, and I know a lot of people are going to probably comment, well, I just put mine on my car. And, and that's probably okay in most cases. Uh, but McLeod recommends that you grind the flywheel, even though it's brand new, um, just to make sure it's perfectly flat. Um, and they don't know what condition it is. They don't know what condition it is in if it's been sitting on a dealer shelf, maybe sitting on its end, um, isn't good for things like this. It will actually, it can cause warpage. So they want you to, to touch off and, and put a texture on this between 80 and 100 grit, um, which I think is a little rough. So I'm not gonna go that, that, uh, that aggressive with it. But in this, uh, in this episode, I'm going to be grinding the flywheel and then I'm going to be balancing, balancing the assembly uh, without the, the discs. I'm going to take the discs out. We're going to have the floater plate torqued down. We're going to have the pressure plate torqued down. And then we're going to um, dynamically balance it. And that is also recommended by uh, McLeod. So I've read a lot of things on the forums about people installing clutches and they have vibrations or they have a vibration at a certain RPM or um, things aren't engaging and disengaging correctly uh, or they have chatter. Um, some of that can be attributed to not properly um, prepping the clutch, balancing the clutch or not setting up the proper height on the floater plate. So this came with three shims. These are five thousandths of an inch thick. So the thickness of one and a half human hairs. <laughs> and they go between the spacer here and this strap. And the strap is attached to the floater plate. So you can see that there. I am going to take these pieces off and get the flywheel ready to go out to a machine shop uh, down south from me and they're going to, uh, to grind off a little bit off the top. Well here's a look at the flywheel with the friction discs out and the floating plate out. Um, brand new surface. Of course it's got a little bit of oil on it for packaging uh, so it doesn't rust or corrode or anything. Of course that will have to come off. Um, we will be making another video on the clutch install, so you guys will be able to see all that. If you subscribe, you'll get a, uh, a notification. But I'm gonna pull all these studs out because I don't really want the shop to do it. Um, I'd rather do it myself. Um, at least I'm gonna try. So these are hexed, 
and I might have to double nut these ones uh, in order to get them out, but these hex ones should come out pretty easy. See the eight holes here for the LSA flywheel. Okay, so we got all the studs out. I'm not particularly happy the way they came out, uh, but I'm going to have the machine shop uh, chase all the holes after they grind, and uh, we'll go from there. like a whole lot but it is pretty good size for a car quest anyway and kind of a dingy old place but uh, they do good work from what I hear and uh, they have a new balancer so hopefully we'll get a look at it okay well I got it back from Andy and uh, looks like he uh, Put a couple holes in it, removed a little bit of material uh, off the flywheel, and uh, though I didn't really want him to, he ended up taking a little bit of weight out of this side here, he made the holes a little bigger, and McLeod actually had a weight right here, and he had to remove that, so he had to remove this weight, plus remove some weight here in order to get it balanced. So he neutral balanced the flywheel. And then he mounted the floater plate and the uh, pressure plate together and balanced that as an assembly. He said it was off 13 grams. Uh, it's off uh, less than a gram now. All right, well, we are back from the machine shop and I've been tinkering around with um, shimming the floater plate to the bottom friction. Uh, I did want to mention something to you guys and I'll show it to you real quick. Now let's say, uh, so you can see the marks here, the alignment marks, that one, and you can't see so much that one, and this one. Now I cleaned the flywheel off, I dimpled that, I put a little tiny dimple in it, so I just use this uh, center punch because it's very sharp, um, and I put it in the black spot and I just lightly dinged it with a hammer. I also did it right here on the floater and right here on the pressure plate. And you might want to do that too. <laughs> I'm glad I did it on the flywheel because I took the flywheel and cleaned it with brake cleaner uh, because it was a little, little dirty. And this paint mark that McLeod put on was completely gone. Okay, so McLeod has a specification for the distance between the floater plate and this disc, that puck there. Now they're saying uh, between 20 and 25 thousandths clearance, and that's all the way around. Um, I can tell you right now I got more than that because the 25 thousandths, now these, I degrease these as well. You don't want any oil or grease on any of this stuff. So that actually, is very loose and that's 25,000 so um, they they have a little bit of they have a few too many shims underneath the uh, the straps here so I'll take these off and show you what I'm talking about you can see what kind of surface the machine shop put on very nice and this was out um, before he ground it he ran a straight edge across it and it was high centering uh, along here. So it was uh, kind of dome shaped in a way. Not a lot, but it was enough that he felt it with this straight edge. And so he knew he needed to grind it down. And as soon as he put the grinder down, it started taking material off of here, but wasn't touching the outside. So I'm glad I went ahead and did that. Um, but getting back to the floater right here, are the shims. Now this came from McLeod with 25 thousandths worth of shims and talking to their technical department um, and I told him that I was getting at least 25 thousandths clearance uh, he told me that was probably too much. 
So he would like to see something closer to uh, 15 to 20. And I'll explain more why in a little bit. So I took my caliper and I measured the thickness of each shim. And a couple of them were 10 thousandths. This one happens to be 5 thousandths of an inch. So a little thicker than a human hair. Um, so each of these spacers has 15 thousandths worth of shims. 15 thousandths on each one. And now I'm going to take the friction disc, lay it down in there, and then take the uh, take the floater. put it down in there like that. So what we have to do here is we now have to put the nuts on, put the lock washers on, and tighten the nuts down to 25 foot-pounds. And what that's going to do is put the floater at its spec uh, neutral height, and then we can measure the, uh, the gap, which is which what is what allows this to move this way and disengage. I think this is actually going to be too tight. So as you can see, with these tightened down, this is in its neutral position. This can, uh, can move and I can pull it up and down a little bit. Now we're going to take our feeler gauge and we're going to take the 20 thousandths and I'm going to find the 15 and maybe the 12. I'm going to clean them up and I'm going to start checking that gap around to make sure we're okay. So this was another test you can do to make sure the bottom disc is uh, loose enough is stand it on its end. Of course the floater plate is going to be uh, torqued down and you're going to take your finger and put it inside the splined hole and just lift up on this. And if that's freely sitting in there and it falls down easily, that means it's not getting hung up on the floater plate. So by placing my fingers across the pressure plate spacers like that and putting one of the ceramic pucks here by rotating it, I can put the feeler gauge right in here and if the feeler gauge pushes up on the floater plate I'm gonna feel that in my fingertips. Say, you know you don't got to be all critical with it as long as it's free like what I showed you where it's loose um, don't forget as this friction plate uh, wears in and those pucks wear down that tolerance is going to increase. So uh, this tolerance here is not one that you can adjust uh, at the pedal. This is fixed. So having this a little bit tighter on assembly, as long as it disengages uh, like it should, and it's free floating and can disengage, that's really what you want because that'll give you um, enough room to be able to wear in, um, but not so much room that you're you're so far on the other side. So there's more uh, technical specs coming up. So just hold on. Okay, so it's taken uh, a few different tries, but uh, we got it down where the 15 thousandths feeler gauge slips in there nicely. 20 thousandths, got some drag, which is uh, right about where they want you. And it it's funny because it would change as I rotated this to a different puck. Um, some would be looser than the others. And it, it kind of makes sense. If you look at this, obviously it's, it's a sandwiched material that's just riveted. And when I measure the frictions, I get different measurements. So it's going to be a little bit of different on your measurement around there. The big thing is, is 
that that friction disc can float in there freely when these are torqued down, when those three are torqued, it should be able to float in about 15 to 20 thousandths tolerance. Uh, they say 20 to 25, but their, their other tech guys said 15. Um, 25 he did not like at all. Uh, 15 would give a little bit of wear. Uh, just as a side note, I also took measurements from the top to the top of the flywheel. Uh, and yeah, they were all pretty close. But, you know, once a pressure plate starts pushing on this, that's what these are for anyway. I mean, it's supposed to flex down. So the next step we're going to do, that's the flywheel side. And this is the top plate. I'm going to go ahead and take our alignment tool. Get that in there. Yours may be plastic. That's fine. I just wanted the metal one. It's a little tighter tolerance. Might make it a little easier to uh, get the input shaft to engage. By the way, Never lock tight uh, your nuts on the floater plate or the pressure plate. Don't ever lock tight them, just torque them. If you... right, so I'm just going by a little bit at a time, crisscrossing, so don't tweak the pressure plate. Just bringing it down little by little all the way around. And then I'm going to torque it to 35 foot-pounds. And then what we'll do is uh, get a bearing of some sort, something at least that big. And then we're going to press on it with a press, 400 thousandths. And then we're going to make sure that I can push these things around, get a measurement off of them. They don't give me a measurement for the top one. We've already measured the bottom. We know it's good. But the GM uh, slave cylinder, it's going to move about 440 thousandths is my understanding, 420 to 440. Um, so we want to make sure that we get that shimmed correctly. Uh, and that's another, part, another video. And uh, that when we push down on this at least 400, which that'll actually push down more, that we get complete disengagement. Because then that'll mean that that will definitely get complete disengagement. All right, so we're here at the press and this is a pressing block. It's under tension now. Uh, the rule is in uh, fight is in tenths. So we started out with this edge being at 500 thousandths and we've only pressed it down 300 and we've already got movement on the frictions. I can spin these uh, without any problem. So I can't get the, uh, the spline shaft underneath it because of the block. And I didn't want to press uh, supporting the sides of the flywheel uh, because this is already precision ground. So that turns really easy. So we should be good to go. We know it's going to disengage. And that's what we wanted. So something that I didn't catch on video uh, because at the last minute my buddy brought over some feeler gauges. Uh, we did check uh, the gap on the lower friction disc while the pressure plate was being engaged and we were still within that spec that we had earlier in the video. So confident that it's going to disengage. Um, it'll be interesting to see where the release is on the pedal travel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. It helps promote my videos on YouTube. Thanks for coming by the garage, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.